Welcome back. This show explores the idea that we've all been here before in a past life. So far, we've seen former royal correspondent and celebrity jungle adventurer Jenny Bond take part in a regression session where she seemed to revisit the eventful life of a 17th century girl, Amelia, who lost her younger brother to a terrible flood. There's water and I think it was a drowning. Let go. Lost lost him. I should have been holding him. The question is, what do you believe? Is Jenny exploring the past life or is it all from her imagination? The idea that the human soul could have lived before certainly stirs up some lively debate. Now, although past life regression therapists will insist that in order to sort out your psychological problems in this life, you've got to kind of dredge up these past life memories and, and work through them and, and come to terms with them, there is in fact no convincing clinical evidence whatsoever that this kind of therapy is actually helpful simply because these studies have not been done. You know, I don't believe in reincarnation. Millions of people do, and, and, and good luck to them. What I'm saying is you can't test it scientifically, and as a scientist, I would therefore have to mm, put it in a box marked not proven. Hypnosis is interesting. It, it does occur, but the old idea that it's an altered state of consciousness, akin to sleep or sleepwalking, seems to be replaced today with the idea that it is a role-playing game. And there is nothing that anybody does under hypnosis that cannot equally be done by instructing them to consciously role-play. In a moment, I'll be finding out exactly what Jenny makes of it all, but first, it's time to reveal what our historian detective uncovered during his investigation. Do any of the details of Jenny's story ring true? Jenny's regression tells the story of Amelia a working-class girl from the early 18th century struggling to survive. And although the records from this period are quite scarce, particularly for the working classes, I think there are some real gems in Jenny's story, and one fact in particular that's startling. But before we get to the bottom of it, first of all we need to find out where it's set. Whereabouts in the world are you? I think I'm in London, or Belfast. Rycroft Street or something, but I don't, don't know why that's there. Now, I couldn't find a Rycroft Street in Belfast, but I did find two in London. One was a street in Fulham, the other a road in Lewisham. And it's perfectly possible that the road was around back in 1713. So we're not in Belfast, we are in London. But what other clues were there? I think I've probably stolen something. I think I might have stolen some food. A sad situation, but terribly common for the poor of 18th century London. The poverty-stricken child Amelia may well have been scavenging to survive. I must be being punished. Whether you were desperate or not, in 1713, the law knew no difference. Were you aware of how long you'd been in the jail? Five years, I don't know. Getting locked up for theft back in the 18th century is hardly news, but for five years, even by the draconian standards of the day, it does seem like a long time. Traditionally, it would probably be no more than a couple of years at most, any more than that, and they'd send you packing to Australia. So why was Amelia locked up for so long? Well, it could have been an unusual case, or perhaps with no way of measuring time, years felt longer than they really were. Often, the sad truth was that once you were inside a prison, you might simply be forgotten about. In her regression, Jenny says that Amelia was sent to a jail, but back in the early 18th century, jails were where you went if you were a debtor. I think far more likely given the crime and the period, Amelia was sent to a house of correction. And the most famous in London at that time was Bridewell, and it stood here just off of Fleet Street. Life in prison was very harsh, and for women in particular. They had few rights and defences against violent abuse, and as a result, prison births were common. How did you leave the jail? Someone unlocked the door and I left with my baby. And where were you going? Did you know where you were going? Anywhere away from the jail. But our tale doesn't end there. There was one more clue, one more discovery, which frankly I found astonishing. Um, some kind of flood. There's water, and I think it was a drowning. It might have been my brother. Couldn't save him. Lost him. I should have been holding him. 
Now, what's really exciting is that we can actually work out when this flood was that Jenny talks about. In her regression, she tells us that Amelia was 16 in 1713, but that she was 12 when the flood occurred, just four years earlier. That gives us a firm date of 1709. And what's more, she does tell us that it affected the whole city. The question is, would a record of an event like that have survived over 300 years? Chaos, um, some kind of chaos in a city. After a bit of digging around, something quite remarkable turned up. This is a diary entry from 1789, 80 years after the moment we're talking about, but this is what it says. Notwithstanding, the frost was as severe and the snow as deep as ever it was since 1709. Jenny's date absolutely on the nose. So I talked to the Met Office to see if those kind of conditions could have caused the flood she talks about, and this is what they said. 1709 is mentioned as a wet year, with a remarkably deep snow falling on Christmas Day. It is possible, therefore, that melting snow contributed to flooding in London in 1709. Now, how could Jenny have known that? The flood of 1709. I didn't know anything about that. Really? Mm. No, I'm terrible at history. I couldn't tell you anything that happened in the 1700s. Um, interesting. How does that make you feel? Uh, it's spooky. Yeah, it is odd. It's, the whole thing is uh, <laughs> very surprising. You were fully aware of what you were saying. I was fully aware, yeah. And you were quite controlled about yeah. what you said as well. Yes, I was very relaxed and um, was I just answering a series of questions as in an interview um, or was I in some kind of trance which was pulling this information out of me? I certainly don't know why I said certain things. Like I, I went with the flow, I Did suppose. you see vivid pictures? Yes, uh, some. Certainly, I mean, I still can remember uh, the corridor and the doors. I remember it felt very cold and shivery. Um, again, you can say that's because the room we were actually filming in was cold. I, I don't know. There's always a logical side of my brain that wants to try and find. Well, you're an going answer. to be like that, aren't you? You're going to analyse it. You're yeah. going to look at it from a very uh, objective uh, point of view. Yes, I think you know, the nature of the job, you know, being a reporter, you're going to be sceptical and analytical. But isn't there part of you that, that when you allow yourself to be regressed that you must have thought I don't want to give too much of myself away here because uh, as a journalist you never do that we never see that side of you oh I don't know all the things I've been doing you know being in jungles and being interviewed everywhere I'm quite an open sort of person actually yeah. so uh, I don't think I you know there was anything I felt I, I had to keep back you know I was very surprised I wouldn't normally on television say I think I've been raped you yes. know but that's a particularly traumatic part of the story. Where did that come from? I really don't know. Um, that's not the sort of thing I would willingly have, have made up. And Simeon as well, this, this sad story of, yes. of, of, of your brother. Yes, a feeling that I'd definitely done something very wrong, not criminally wrong, but let down my family and apparently, yes, my brother or oh, somebody um, in the family and I should have looked after this person and yes I do remember that, that feeling of great guilt. What about now when you look back on, on that experience? What, what, what do you feel now? There will always be a part of me that is totally sceptical about it and there will always be a part of me thinking that I am just, I simply answered questions that were asked of me um, and if you like made up a story, though I wasn't trying to make it up. I, I, I was just allowing my imagination um, to, to flow. Uh, there will always be a part of me, the greater part of me, that will think that. Um, but I am surprised that you found anything that was um, accurate. Um, and, you know, I'd like to do it again, really. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. It's obviously something that you are very... The, the, the whole aspect of this is something that you're, you're very open to. And you yeah. want to explore, you like experimenting. I do. I love, I mean, coincidences in life are, are just fascinating, aren't they? And the reasons why thing ha things happen, again, it's part of my trade and your trade, sort of ask questions, why, why, why? Um, and so anything like this, absolutely, yeah, I love doing. And what about deja vu? Have you ever had any feelings of sort of deja vu? That, you that... do, do, yeah, absolutely. Um, you just... It's so weird, isn't it? It stops you in your tracks. I can't think of specific examples, but, you know, places you've been and you just... You have that feeling come over you and you think, hey, I, I've done this, or is it, yeah, is it a trick of memory? Was I here before? 
And where does that come from? What did you, what did you think of Amelia, the person? I think she was a, a young woman who had a, clearly a very tough upbringing, um, a very traumatic youth, but somehow rose above it and, and achieved, as I say, some kind of serenity. Are there any parallels between her and, and, and your character? She was very resilient. Yeah, yeah, I'm a pretty tough old bird, I always say. <laughs> when people ask me, you know, how did I do the things I did in the jungle, I say, I'm a stubborn old bint. And I think Amelia probably was as well. And I also am quite a, an optimistic person, and I kind of think that whatever life throws at me, nothing very bad has happened, but if it did, uh, I think I would, you know, get through it. I'm quite positive. And, and do you think that, uh, that this experience has taught you anything about, about yourself or, uh, or, or about regression? There could well be something in this. I, I don't see where all this really would be coming to, so I have a big problem with the logic of it. I, I've never seen the point of, of having lived before, um, because if you can't remember it, what's the point of it? I mean, if you don't know you've learnt anything from the previous life and you have no consciousness of it, then it seems to me there was no point in that previous life in the first place. <laughs> oh, I can't get away from my logic, can I? No, you can't. <laughs> no. Oh. Well, that's what Jenny thinks. Uh, of course, it's up to you to make your own mind up. Here's what the experts have to say. Jenny's past life regression surprised me, and I think it definitely surprised Jenny, in the fact that her logical, analytical mind didn't get in the way and allowed her to release herself into the past life and see a wonderful story emerge. Although there wasn't an emotional aspect linked to the past life, she certainly experienced a vivid story Jenny's story involves actually escaping from prison and, and getting away from this horrible situation. And I can't help wondering whether maybe there's a kind of metaphorical element there that recently she's had quite a major life change. She's got away from being the royal correspondent. She's now doing more exciting things like, uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. It's a complete change of image. And I think the fact that this is coming through as a metaphor in her past life is interesting, but it doesn't in any way show that the past life is real. Jenny is a very humorous person. She's got a great personality, a great sense of humor, which the public have never actually been allowed to see. I think that this regression is her desire to show herself as a very human being. So, there we are. When it comes down to it, there is, of course, only one question left. Jenny, do you think you've been here before? I... Doubt it. No, I'm not. I'm not convinced enough. No. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Join us again next time for another chance to explore the possibility that we might have been here before.